everyone, I am Roan Parrish, author of The Holiday Trap, out now from Sourcebooks, and today I am going to show you how to make latkes. Um, in the back of your book, The Holiday Trap, is this recipe, and so you can make them along with me. So The Holiday Trap is a house swap double romance. Uh, you've got Greta, one of the main characters, who lives in a small town in Maine with her super, super tight-knit family. But right before the holidays, they're feeling a little too tight-knit. She needs to get out of town. Then you've got Truman, who lives in New Orleans, who's just had a horrible breakup, and he also wants to get the hell out of town. So their mutual friend, Ramona, tells them that they should just swap houses for the month of December, and they do. So Greta leaves Maine and goes to New Orleans. Truman leaves New Orleans, goes to Maine. And while they're there, each of them meet the love of their lives. Um, one thing for Greta, though, is that she's never spent Hanukkah away from her family, and she's never had a Hanukkah when she didn't eat her mom's potato latkes. So while she's in New Orleans, she's feeling a little sad about that, so she tells Karis, her love interest, that she is missing that, that holiday food, and so Karis and her two best friends, um, when they have a holiday party, they make all the foods that Greta grew up eating, so potato latkes, kugel, all this other stuff, so that she feels really included. So. Today, I am gonna show you how to make potato latkes so that you can include all the Jewish friends in your holiday celebrations too. For this recipe, you will need potatoes. I like to use russet because they're really starchy and that helps hold your latkes together. Eggs, garlic powder, optional, but everything tastes better with garlic. Salt and pepper oil to fry your latkes in. Uh, this is canola oil, but any oil with a high smoke point will do. And an onion. I like to use a sweet onion, uh, sweet yellow onion. So the first thing we're gonna do is shred our potatoes. You can do this using a box grater, it's fine. I just, you know, we only have so many years on this planet. So I'm using a food processor and I wanted to show you this because I actually did this wrong the last time I used it. So usually what you're using with a food processor is this blade that goes in. This is like to make hummus or it chops everything to mush. So if you're like me, there's a chance that the last time you went to shred vegetables, you forgot to take this out. And then as they were shredded, they then fell onto these blades and turned into mush, which is not what you want for latkes. So you wanna take this out, whatever, it'll always look kind of like this. Take yours out. And then this is your grater. So you want the bumps up so that they'll catch the potato. And then this goes right on here and it rests right at the top. So you have space for your potatoes to go. And it, I think it looks wrong like this, which is why I'm going over this. Cause when I first put this here, I was like, uh, it's clearly wrong. And you put your lid on like usual and your potatoes will go in here. And then you use, this is your guard to push them down. Cause I don't want anyone chopping off their fingers and then blaming me for it. So we've washed our potatoes and cut them basically just small enough to go in here. So what you're gonna do is turn on your, your food processor and then put these in and you'll watch these beautiful little flaky potato pieces. That's all there is to it. And repeat until you have your desired amount of potato. All right, next we are going to shred the other ingredient in latkes, which are onions. So you're just gonna cut your ends off and cut your onion in half, or we might need to make these a little smaller to fit in the tube of the food processor. And then you're gonna shred these exactly the same way as you did. Oop, she don't fit. All right. Okay. Now I'll just go cry a little bit from the onions and get all the beauty of latkes. Okay, so we've shredded five or six potatoes and two onions. And now I'm going to squeeze the living heck out of them. And by living heck, I of course mean water because a, a big deal with latkes is dryness. So the wetter your latkes are, the less crispy they will become. 
So what you really want is to, to have your potato and onion mixture be as dry as possible. So here's what I do. You could use a strainer or something if you want, but I use just a bowl. This is one of those like super cheapo Ikea bar towels because it has, um, you can kind of see through it. So there's like a place for the water to escape. And then what I do is throw things all over the floor and onto Timmy's feet, basically. Uh, so you're gonna empty all of your onion potato mush into here. Okay. Pew. Into the bowl. And now what I'm basically gonna do is squeeze it. So you'll gather up your little package And then you can already see there's a ton of liquid coming out. All of this liquid we want out. Because um, imagine putting this onto oil. It will not be crispy. It will, like, spoosh oil in your face when it hits the pan. So basically, I twist, twist, twist until all the liquid's out. This is really, like... A test of your patience. If you're a patient human being, this will take like 20 minutes probably to get all the stuff out. I'm not a patient person. I'm not. I'm impatient. Uh, but for the sake of this video, I will try to get it all out. Okay, so if you're doing it right, you'll start weeping and then you'll be sitting in your kitchen <laughs> like laughing at the fact that your onions are making your, like squeezing onion juice is making your eyes water and then your neighbor will walk past the window and probably be like, that poor, poor person. She's just sobbing alone cooking in her refrigerator. I mean, in her kitchen, <laughs> I'm not cooking in the refrigerator. Anyway, do not, whatever you do, no matter how much your eyes burn, don't throw this away. Don't think like, I'll throw the water away because then, it won't make me cry as much because we need to collect the potato starch. The Jewish struggle. Thank you for joining me on Cry As You Cook. Just kidding, that was an accident. Okay, so once you've gotten your potato and onion package so that it's not, it does not dripping, well mine's still like, it's got a little coming out, but I think we're okay. Um, what you're gonna do, is unwrap your package. It's very exciting because when you open it, it's gonna be like a cute little little potato baby nest. And then I'm gonna put that aside for a second. I just wanted to show you because I got excited uh, and let that keep draining for a second. Okay, this is very important. What you have here, this is all the liquid that came out of the onions and the potatoes. But what is gonna separate at the bottom, because it's heavier, is potato starch. Potato starch is a great binding agent for anything, but especially if something made out of potato. And it's great because some people use flour in their latkes, but using potato starch makes them gluten-free. So the way you access this amazing ingredient, follow me, come to me, is you don't want to agitate your liquid. You'll just pour it off and see this white stuff in the bottom? That's your potato starch. Isn't that cool? So you just want to pour slowly so that you're not losing any of the potato starch. And that's why I like russet potatoes so much for latkes because they're quite starchy, which means that you end up with more potato starch and it can help your latkes bind really well. <clears throat> so there you go. So now this, if you've ever seen cornstarch mixed with water, like when you're a little kid and you do that like saw liquid lesson where you learn things that aren't liquid or solid, it's basically like this, only that's cornstarch and this is potato starch, but it's amazing. <laughs> Also, if you're just randomly shredding potatoes and you wanna like freak some people out, you could just be like, oh my God, look what was in 
the potatoes! You know, some people don't know about potato starch, that's all I'm saying. Okay, so I'm just transferring my potato starch into a little bowl so that I can reuse this other big bowl because I don't like doing dishes. And what you're going to do now is take your potato and onion mixture, put it in your prepared bowl, and you can see how much drier this is than when it was full of gloop, which means this is gonna sizzle and become crispy when it hits oil in a way that the wet potato would have just kind of like lowered the uh, temperature of the oil and given you kind of a soggy latke. So you wanna just mix together all your potatoes and onions. And then I'm gonna add two eggs. You can do a little more, I mean, it depends on the size of your eggs and the like, how much potato you used. But what you really want is just to get a good uh, mix going on. And I'm gonna mix it with my hands. Um, but this is a great time to add salt and pepper. So you season with your heart. Salt, a little garlic powder. <clears throat> now you might be wondering why I didn't use fresh garlic when I used fresh onion. Um, fresh garlic is better for most things taste-wise, but um, because garlic, or because latkes get cooked at a pretty high temperature, like they're fried, it will burn your garlic. Like the temperature of the oil that you need to cook latkes will give your garlic, any of that garlic that's on the surface, like a burnt taste, which is um, burnt garlic does not taste nice. So I like to use garlic powder because it mixes in, it gets absorbed into the potato itself, just like salt and pepper, and then it does not burn when you cook them. And then the last thing you're gonna add is like about a tablespoon-ish of your potato starch. You can always add more. But you can't take it out, so. Then I mix this together with my hands or with a spatula. And what you're going for consistency wise is like, kind of like hamburger patty if you've eaten such a thing. So you might be asking yourself, how do I know if this is the right consistency? Once you've got your, your egg in here, your potato starch, um, you want to try it before you ruin one in the in the, in the oil, in the oil of Mount Doom. So I'm making a little chunk, pushing it between my hands like this. And then the way I test is if you can hold it like this and it doesn't fall apart, then it's gonna stay together in the oil just fine. If though, for example, like this part was separating and it was falling like that, then I would know it wouldn't stay together in the oil and I would add either another egg or another tablespoon of potato starch. All right, so next we are going to heat our oil. So I'm using canola oil. Um, what you want is you don't want anything with a low smoke point like a sesame oil or an olive oil because in order for your oil to get hot enough to fry the latkes, it actually burns the oil. So canola oil, safflower oil, uh, vegetable oil, all those will work great. And you want to pour this in your vessel for frying. Now. Latkes are not a deep fry, so this isn't like you fill the whole thing with oil. Basically, you want the oil to come up like halfway on the latka so that when you flip it, then the other half will get cooked, and that's all the depth you need. So we're going to let our oil heat up, and I test my oil by just dropping a little bit of potato in it, and that's how you know that it's ready to fry. All right, our oil is ready, and I'm going to form my latkes by putting it between my palms like this. This, for one thing, makes a really dense latke that's not as likely to fall apart. It also squeezes that last little bit of water out, you can tell, uh, back into the bowl. And then we listen to that sizzle. And you can see the water is coming up about halfway up the side of the latke. So we'll let the bottom brown and then when we flip it, 
the other side will get cooked. Now really importantly, you do not want to crowd the pan. So you can call it the rule of three, whatever you want, but I never do more than three latkes in a pan because even if you have a lot of area left, the volume of material in the oil will lower the heat of the oil enough that it's not a frying temperature. So even though you could probably get six in there if you put them real close together, we're going to go with three. We're going to be patient and just let them do their thing. So while our latkes are cooking, I want to show you the setup I use for draining them and leaving them until you're ready to eat them. Most people grew up, I know I did, where your parent puts like a piece of uh, paper towel and then puts the latkes, piece of paper towel, latkes. That works okay, but as you can imagine, the oil seeps into the paper and they just get kind of uncrispified. So what I like to do is I put, these are just cookie drying racks like you would use to cool a cookie. And we all know you cool cookies on a drying rack because the air circulation means that it also lets the bottom of the cookie stay crispy instead of like marinate in its own heat and moisture. So I take a little rimmed baking tray, some cookie sheets, and then I'm gonna put the latkes on here until they're fully dry and fully cooled or like, you know, ready to eat. And then they'll be crispy on both sides. Okay, we're gonna flip our latkes when you see the edges get this nice brown on them, then you know that they're probably ready to flip. Now, there are many theories, many preferences, but I think medium golden to dark brown is like ideal. Um, people say you shouldn't flip your fried food more than once. I, I guess I believe it, but I do it anyway. So we could give these a little bit more color when we flip them back over if we want to, or if you're someone who likes your latkes a little bit less crispy, then these are perfect for you. And I'll eat other ones. Super pro tip, how do I know when it's time to flip the second side? I just look, that's all. Just give them a little flip. Oh yeah, they're freaking perfect. So I'm just gonna put a little more color on this other side. Look at those babies. Profesh latkes. These are ready to come out of the pan. Don't turn your heat off because you're just going to do another batch. So we're going to take these out. I like to use a slotted uh, thingy spatula so that the oil just falls right out. Give them a little shake and then transfer them over onto your cookie sheet. Ooh cookie sheet situation. And then most importantly, you want to give these puppies a generous salting while they're still wet and can absorb the salt. So I want to try something. I've seen these on the menu and like at like a Jewish deli and I want to try it. It's pickle latkes. So I love a fried pickle. I love anything to do with pickles and I love a latka. So I... I'm not exactly sure how to do it, but what I'm thinking is, what if I put like a chunk of pickle and instead of using like breadcrumbs to coat it, I put it in the middle of a latke, squeezing out some water so that it's like fully <laughs> and we'll just see if it works. So if you find yourself without enough, quite enough oil to get halfway up the latke like I just did, but you only have one or two to fry and you don't want to uh, waste more oil, if you tilt your pan, it'll all fall to the half pan and then it's deeper. You know, because that's how it works. Turns out. So, you may or may not know, a battle rages within the Jewish community and anyone who eats latkes. And that battle is applesauce or sour cream with your latkes. There's also ketchup. Ketchup is the 
green party ticket here, I would say. Some people really love it because obviously ketchup and potatoes is delicious, but it is not actually, uh, like no matter how many times you vote that ketchup is your condiment of choice to eat with latkes, like you know it will never win. Uh, so you just like keep voting your conscience or you're like, never mind, I'm gonna throw my weight behind either the applesauce or the sour cream vote. I kind of like my sexuality. I like all of them. They're all delicious. They all bring something different to the table and they're a really good one mixed together. Enough said. So here we have Battle of the Latkes. You got Greta who lived in Maine and moved to Louisiana, to New Orleans. You've got Truman who lived in New Orleans and moved to Maine. And I am going to do a taste test of which condiment they would like best on their latkes because I made them up, so I know. All right, number one, classic from my childhood, applesauce. If you're really into it, you can make your own applesauce. This is just a like chunky, regular applesauce. But what the reason I like it is you get the saltiness from the latke and you get the sweetness from the applesauce and it is a really nice combination. I make really good latkes. And it's basically the, the takeaway here. That's good. Mmm. Sweet and salty. Yep. Okay. Great. <clears throat> Sour cream. A, a more somber condiment, I would suggest. It's very creamy. I don't like that much of it. delicious because you get the crispy salty of the potato and then you get the kind of like what would you call it like a vinegary sourness of the sour cream you know I never noticed that actually both sour cream and applesauce add the same thing to the latkes all of a sudden choosing sides doesn't seem so necessary all right now for the wild card Ketchup. I'll just take a little, little piece and a little, a little dipper. Okay, here's why ketchup is never gonna win, even though it tastes great. Because it make lot makes latkes seem like any other potato product. So of course you put your dip your fries in ketchup, of course you put ketchup on your hash browns or your whatever. Um so yeah, it's great, but it makes latkes taste like any other potato product and we want latkes to taste special and unique because they're a pain in the ass and we only make them at Hanukkah. So basically here's what we're left with. We're left with a noble dairy option and a noble fruit option. And I really think that Greta would choose applesauce. She's a sweetie. She's got a little heart of gold in there. And I feel like growing up with lots of sisters like she did, um, it would be easier to get applesauce because it comes in larger containers. It's cheaper. And yeah, I think she would just like something sweet. Whereas Truman has grown up with like maybe a little, a little too much sweetness sometimes. I think he would like sour cream because deep down he wants a real partner and sour cream can hang. Like it's a stick to your ribs condiment that just like, it's not going anywhere. Look, it's never coming off this fork. He's here to stay, Truman. It's okay. So there you have it. They're both delicious. I make really good latkes, and now you can too by following the instructions and recipe in the back of the holiday trap. The time has come. The moment you've all been waiting for. And by you, I mean me. It is the time to taste our singular pickle latke. So you may remember this latke has a pickle in it. Ooh. There's the pickle! Ooh. Kosher dill, obvi. Okay, so here's what I'm thinking for the pickle latke. It's gotta be sour cream, but I've had a, a real obsession lately with everything seasoning. And like everyone knows, bagels, latkes, juice, yes. So, Putting a little everything seasoning. 
with sour cream on my pickle latke. Ooh. Oh my God. That was so fucking good. Wait. Pickle latke. That's delicious. So there you have it, latkes with me, Roan Parish, and um, The Holiday Trap out from Source Books now. You can find it at any bookstore, uh, big bookstores, little bookstores, order it from your favorite indie, grab it online, listen to it in audiobook, buy all of them so that I can buy really fancy pickles to use in my next pickle latkes. And uh, yeah, thanks for hanging out with me. I would love it if you make latkes based on this recipe. If you want to tag me on social media and send me pictures so that I can drool over all of your latkes too.